In our Singapore homebrew segment today, we are going to go to the Singapore Science Center. Joining us is Lim Tit Meng, the Associate Professor and also Chief Executive of the Science Center Board. Tit Meng, great to have you in the studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you, Neil, for bringing me back here. And since today is the seventh day of the Lunar New Year, it's the birthday of all mankind. So I like oh. wish all our listeners oh. happy human day. Wow. wow. Thank you. Birthday for all mankind I today. Think I think I qualified in that group. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. <laughs> could be debated, but I don't could, know. It could very much be debated. <laughs> but, but thank you, Timmy. And uh, Timmy, we have had you on so many times over the years, and unfortunately in recent years it's all been virtual, and great to have you here. Give us, uh, before we talk about the big topic at hand, the new Science Center that's coming up, Talk to us about what's happening currently at the Science Center. How's it going, and, and how are the crowds been now that COVID regulations have been relaxed over the past nine months or so? Well, we're pleased to say that the rain did help. When it rains, we get people coming in. Oh, so sure. the, the Chinese New Year crowd was great. Great. And uh, we've been revamping ourselves. So when we opened, after the COVID uh, rules have uh, uh Teased up a bit, out. yeah. yeah. Uh, we continue to put in new things. And for the Chinese New Year, our Tesla coil had been singing Chinese New Year song to all our visitors. Oh. <laughs> it is something very unique. It is something new. We just uh, had it reopened for the Chinese New Year season. So, yes, the business has been great. Foreigners so, have been coming so let's, in also. let's reiterate, it's the Tesla coil, not the Tesla car. No, no, no. The, the, original, <laughs> the original the Tesla. But this is where we are now. <laughs> exactly, right? Marketing. And, because when Titman came into the studio and said we've had the Tesla all set up, in the, I thought he had cars. <laughs> like he turned the place into, Good a, marketing, into right? a showroom. Good marketing. But yes, the original, the OG Tesla. <laughs> yes, 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 in yes, your science yes. center. Oh, that's great. And, and so everyone's coming coming back, great, great news, and there, you refreshed a lot of the uh, the exhibits. But late last year, you guys had the big announcement, right? Oh, yes, it was a long-awaited, I would say even decade-long yeah. <laughs> yeah. news, and we are very excited uh, that Minister uh, for Education actually announced the making of the new Science Centre, and for the first time, we could even show the visual of the design. So we are all extremely excited, related. You just use whatever descriptive, descriptive term to describe our feeling. Yeah. Okay, top line. New Science Center coming. Where is it going to be? It's going to be just in front of the Chinese Garden MRT station. Okay. Oh, perfect. So it is a gateway. It is a right. nexus from the station into the Jurong Lake Gardens and beyond that is the Jurong Lake District. Awesome. Are they going to keep the pagodas in the Chinese Well, the garden? pagoda is going to be there, and it's going to be a very beautiful view from yeah. where you step into the new building. It's a requirement for us to have a thoroughfare, and the design is very clever. It, it frames the hmm. pagoda in the Oh, nice. Pagoda. It's going to be a sure must go, must take photograph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of now, yeah. everybody wants to know, the second question is when? When's it going to open? I know we're jumping, well, putting the cart before the horse a little bit. If here. all goes well, uh, we are targeting end of 2027 mm -hmm. when the Science Center celebrates its 50th years of nice. existence. Mm -hmm. Because we were built in 1977, open mm -hmm. rather, 1977. So 2027 is exactly 50 years of our history. Nice. Well, let's talk about 1977 briefly, of course. It was the year that Star Wars came out, and also, maybe coincidentally, your original building has that spaceship element to it. Um, the current building. The current yeah, building, the current existing building, yes. building that's yeah. right. And many, many Singaporeans listening, including myself, has very nostalgic, warm memories of that building. Yeah. So, question is, what's going to happen to it? Well, it will be Conserved. Oh, fantastic. It news. is uh, identified as a heritage building. Uh, the original one, as you said, is like a spaceship landed in the middle of nowhere. It's an mm. award winning uh, uh, design. Yeah. And But no idea yet what it will become? No idea. Uh, mm. But from my understanding, that place of the Jurong Lake will be transformed into some kind of lifestyle hub. Okay. So okay. I do not know. I mean, there are all kinds of speculation, and some people even suggested that since there are no windows, it could be a very nice dance. I was thinking place. Like a, a space age nightclub. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it could be. Anything's possible. Anything's right? possible, Anything and I possible. think uh, it, it, it up 
it's up to the, the community, the, the people in yeah. Singapore, what you want to make the best use of this beloved icon. That's yeah. great. Okay, so we've gotten some of the basics out of the way. It's going to be in the Jurong Lake District. It's going to open in 2027 for the 50th anniversary. Um, we know the current building will be conserved in, in some way, shape, or form. <sighs> okay, now we can exhale. Let's let's get into what are we going to see? What's the experience that that you perceive will happen with the new space, with the new uh, with the new science center? The new science center is designed as a science center for all ages. And uh, because of the land, the campus, uh, it allows us to make it even a civic place. It's not just a science center per se, but a place where all people in Singapore and, and, and visitors will find it relatable, a place where you can spend 24-7. Mm. The galleries may be open in, in control timing, but the open part of the science center will be accessible 24-7. Wow. So it is for all ages. And the design has got a very interesting interlocking bars. Hmm. And, and it's iconic. We have got rooftop with rooftop eco gardens, with rooftop solar power panel and all that. So it's going to showcase modern science center yeah. with technology for green. And the garden is going to blend very nicely with the Jurong Lake Garden. So it is literally a science center in the garden and a garden in a science center. Yeah, well, I was going to talk about the design, and we'll post links up to it later. It's going to be designed by the Saha Hadid Architects, very yeah. famous architect of practice, of course. The the designs that I've seen, Glenn, you know, the futuristic designs are extraordinary. Yeah. I, I mean, it's very hard to articulate. Maybe you can help me with that. But I noticed the color schemes, yes. very naturalistic, the browns and that yes. kind of thing. So yes. it will fit in more organically yes. with yes. the forest around it, with yes. the gardens around it. Is yes. that part of the thinking? Yes, yes. Uh, because uh, in, in a design brief, uh, we specifically, specifically say that, you know, the, the science center should should have nature going in and nature and the science going out. And Zaha and Architects to one, they actually encapsulate, encapsulate that vision very well. And that's why they stood out as the winning entry. Yeah. The moment we saw it, we love it. It is good. It is, it is, it good. is good. It yeah. is good. And, and uh, we thought, wow. And it created a lot of opportunity for us to make the best of that campus. Yeah. It created a lot of place-making opportunities. And that's yeah. why it's going to be community-owned. And it's not just a building you go in gated. It's yeah. going to be so porous. There are so many uh, great examples. Uh, I'm familiar with uh, one in San Francisco, uh, Pier. Yes, Pier Exploratorium. Yeah, the Exploratorium. We work very closely with them, and we're awesome. inspired by them. In fact, one main part we call it the fundamental zone. Mm. As you as you go up, the beautiful spiral staircase designed by Zaha, that you will come to a zone which we really want to aspire. We work very closely with. The exploratorium. Nice. You will feel like you're in exploratorium, playing and ex exploring gadgets. Awesome. On fundamental science. Yeah. The other one is my hometown, Chicago, the Museum of Science and Industry, yes. which is an amazing place. Yes. Neil will yes. get to see it next summer when he goes to Chicago, I'm sure. Mm, yes. But um, you know, there there are really around the world great examples. So you mentioned you worked with the exploratorium. What other uh, science museums have you looked at or will you be looking at or collaborating with to to bring together the best for Singapore? Yes, in, in the past decade as we conceptualized, uh, we have organized many of such study trips and I also uh, with my colleagues attended many of these science center network conferences. Yeah, um, sure. So we have looked at east, west, north, south. I mean the south part will be Australia. I mm. mean the, uh, Australia has got very iconic uh, Questacon which is among the the, the big names in Asia Pacific and San Francisco, California Academy of Science, uh, Chicago, I've been there and, and they are very good in industry yeah. kind of showcase. Uh, we were also, uh, uh, we also look at New York and in Europe we went to this uh, uh, Nemo, Nemo, which is actually a Netherlands, uh, oh, Netherlands. the big names on Nemo. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. it, is, it is a very interesting uh, science center. We, we've been to Denmark. Uh, we we went to Lego House, ah. and of course on the eastern side, Japan, mm. here I come. Mm. It, it's a sure to have to see type. Yes, and I noticed you never mentioned London, but that's okay. That oh was... no, London is always. In fact, uh, oh, we are very close, working closely with London. I mean, I, I I didn't mention UK because, for information, uh, the Science Centre in the 1960s was was because of commissioning the London Museum. Yeah, did a study 
feasibility study. And since then, we've been working very closely with all the London museums and all that. So yeah. I took it as it is already it a was long a given. term. It was, a given, a given, yeah. a given. it was the first museum I ever went to on right, a school right. trip, the London Science Museum. Yes. And to Glenn's point, it really stayed with me. Because even then, as a kid, this is almost, I won't say pre-computers, but it was certainly pre-digital. So there was no computer interaction like there is now. But even as a primary school kid, I remember it being a very tactile, mm, yes. physical, interactive yes. experience. Yes, yes, yes. And that's so important now, is yes, that kids yes. expect there to be an interactive element exactly. throughout. Is exactly. that some of the findings? Yes, this, this is tactile, sensorial. Yep. We want to engage all the senses. And, and since you talk about kids, the New Science Centre will have a double the size current kids stop. Oh, perfect. your daughter had a birthday party there. She right? did. Right? <laughs> she and, loved and, it. And, 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 and it is so popular that uh, we are dedicating a bigger space mm. for the kids stop. And the kids stop is going to be one of its kind. And just to throw a little bit of uh, uh, interest for you to look <laughs> up to that, you know the water play area? Yes. You're going to have a water play area integrated with a kids stop. And mm -hmm. it's going to be one of, it, one of its kind. Nice. When the water play area started in Science Center, we inspired all the shopping malls with mm. all the water feature, including the zoos and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are determined to make the new water play integrated with Kids Stop as yet another paradigm shift. Yeah, because you were one of the first, weren't you, at water play? We were the first. The first, I know. Because <laughs> yeah. Even in the and 90s. You won a watch yeah, I remember going tourism. there in the 90s yeah. and my yes. wife. <laughs> used to take and still does take the kids she's a teacher yeah. to school trips regularly yes, to yes. the water players yes, to yes. science center i didn't realize you were the first you, the first. you were the yes, pioneer yes. And, and and we won the tourism award mm. nice and when you look at the um the kind of mix between permanent exhibitions and perhaps traveling or or temporary exhibitions what what is that going to feel like at the new science center i mentioned that we are interlocking bars mm. So there's one bar, currently we just call it the bar five. And, and that bar five has got exhibition space dedicated for traveling exhibitions. Uh, not just for that, we will make it into a place where you can concert, you mm -hmm. can have interesting trade show, interesting cultural show. And above that bar is going to be a very interesting rooftop garden mm -hmm. for receptions. We envision that will be a popular place for wedding reception. Mm -hmm. Because you'll be looking into the lake, Interesting. you'll witness the beautiful sunset, yeah. and and there will be a city up there yeah. for you to host all kinds of events. So that whole block is for that, and we were looking at that as possible mice yeah. conference uh, kind of setting, especially in the future, that will be a gateway towards the whole Jurong Lake District. Yeah, and also, yeah. Tipmeng, there's a lovely nostalgic element to that, because in the 70s and 80s, the Chinese Japanese gardens was a popular destination for weddings. Exactly. So I love the idea you're bringing it back. And, and, and that's the reason why the pagoda can never be removed. Correct. Many people petition and say that. It's in a wedding photo. My parents got married and exactly. photographed there and all that. How dare you remove that exactly. memory from us? It's the same with the topayo one, the small topayo. Exactly. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, it was yes. a wedding yes, destination. Yes, right? no, I mean, wedding is a big thing for us. Of course. Oh, yeah. of course. But on that point, I want to bring in one of our listeners. Pin Pin Chia says, I really love the exhibition on aging at the Science yes. Centre. I yes. saw that. It was yes. terrific. Yes. Thought it was outstanding. was very emotional for me experiencing what being old and suffering from physical deficiencies would be like. Pin Pin Chia makes a great point that the Science Centre, I'm guessing the new one, has to be multi-generational. It's not just about the kids. It's for all ages. Yeah. Uh, so it's not just for the kids. Uh, in fact, uh, just yesterday we presented to our board certain concepts of what might be in a new science center and one of the topics is called the final curtain hmm. it's about aging right and 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 what do we learn about aging with science and technology and with social sciences how do we be more empathizing with the limitation yeah. and so on and yes the dialogue with time was a great success uh, it was among the first of us moving to social science interfacing with science and technology yeah and we see this trend is becoming more important because as we know in time to come most of our people will be Age about population, years old, yeah. right? So it will be, and we want that place to be a place where even the elderly people find it relevant. You come there to learn new things and you're, in a way, be prepared for how to age actively 
mm. gracefully, and there's nothing to fear. We definitely that's need that. Can we see that exhibit this weekend, maybe? Well, <laughs> when you said aging and technology, I just and thought about and, us this morning. And gracefully. <laughs> and, yeah, and gracefully, yes. It's, 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 yes. You know, the um, one of the great, I think, um, interplays has uh, over these last few years has been the art science museum and the science center and you've had quite different missions in, but in the same sort of yes. genre if you yes. will right but from what i'm hearing from you it sounds like you might have more you might be more competition to the art science museum if i can put it that way yes. in years to come yes. how are you how are you viewing you know the two structures, the two programs that that each art science and the science center will will provide. Yes, uh, in recent time we are promoting STEM plus science, technology, engineering, and maths yep. plus plus art plus philosophy plus ethics plus humanity and so on. So we are focusing on STEM plus arts. Uh, it's not art science, but science art hmm. and. Anyway, Honor and, and I, we're all good friends, and Art Science Museum has been a great partner with us. Yeah. And we see more and more of convergence because you need to explain science in a way that people can relate to. And art sometimes warm you more than mm -hmm. just hard fact of science. And uh, recently, we opened our climate change guilt trip. It's a, a board mm -hmm. game style, and, and you go in and play the game and find out how guilty you are in terms of contributing carbon footprint. Yeah. And in order to express some of the ideas, we have commissioned artists. So just last week, we, we installed the art piece. And uh, we have been working with the Singapore Art Museum. And they use uh, art to interpret big data. And, and from there, it really made you understand and really appreciate all the numbers and figures. And, and we are moving to that kind of direction. It's not just art per se, yeah. but it's actually science and how to use art to enhance that science yeah. and technology. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. One serves the other. Yes. Or supports the other, I should yes, say. Exactly. Fantastic. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. a wonderful idea. Right. Well, we've got comments coming in. Oh, lots, lots of comments. Them. Yeah. Athanasios says the uh, existing the yeah. existing science center was designed by Raymond Wu. Yes. One of Singapore's pioneer modernist architects. Yes. And he hopes it's preserved, which as you it said, is. it, it is will preserved. be. It, it will be. It is. Yes. Yep. Aloysius yes. is saying, I love the science center. Always find something interesting to explore. Thank you, yeah, thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, All right, yeah, so yeah. what's coming up? I mean, 2027, still a few years away, 2023. Yeah. What's happening in 2023? Okay, um, we have just uh, uh, opened, other than our climate change, our titans of electricity. Hmm. Uh, that is the Tesla coil, musical Tesla coil. Uh, and and uh, it's a new show with new uh, Tesla instruments. And as it implies musical means, it can play songs. And uh, nice. now, now, Chinese New Year, we have actually a Chinese New Year greeting songs towards the end of the show. We also have opened one, a, a bit of uh, 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 experiment. Uh, we know that technology is moving us into the have and have not. And, and sometimes we are unknowingly alienating people. Hmm. Right? Good it's point. a bit of discrimination. Hmm. Uh, so we came up with this simple exhibit called Alien Nation. It, it, it's like a capsule of an MRT train. Oh. You step in there and you realize that it's not designed for human. Huh. Because we are in an alien nation. Yeah. Mm. And it's designed in such a way that it's not thinking about my needs. It's all really, and, and, and there's some kind, of, some kind of discrimination which we then realize that sometimes when we have no empathy, we thought people were in a way, be like us, yeah. but they're not like us, yeah. and we want to create that kind of dialogue. So this is, this is something huh. new, yeah. and uh, we also and that's planning temporary for now. It is for a year or two. Yeah. And I mean, it's something that we, we built. We had wanted to bring it out to travel to shopping malls and others to bring out the awareness. Hey, let's be more understanding and more embracing diversity, inclusivity, and all that. And uh, meanwhile, we are also talking uh, to the Bioethic Advisory Committee, and we are developing an exhibit on bioethics. It's about all the damage they can do, biomedical intervention and all that. We can, but should be. And <laughs> how do we handle all those things? So it's going to be quite interesting. After all, we have to ask a lot of questions ourselves. Yeah. So you've yeah. been looking at the ethical boundaries. The ethical part, but we have to showcase the technology so that people understand that the technology is there. Right. 
but we need to consider the ethics. It's just like AI with ethics, right? Yeah. Yeah. So those things are become questions that we want people nice. to ask. Wonderful. Nice. Hey, we have to leave it there, uh, Titmeng, but thank you so much for being with us. Lim Titmeng, the Associate Professor and Chief Executive of the Science Center Board, the new Science Center coming in 2027. Uh, the old one's still around, though, and lots to go and see. Yes, yes, it's going to be even more exciting because we're going to keep the, the interest yeah. high, right? Uh, so that we wouldn't say, oh, it's becoming so run down and, and people don't come. Right. We want people to come and share with us what they like most. Absolutely. So Beautiful. that we can also co-create with people. And just pencil in the date, 2027. Make sure it's a Saturday. So we, <laughs> we will come down and host the show live. Host the show from the news. Right. We'd Why love not? to do that. Love that. Thank you, Tim. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.